Guys, what's going on YouTube? What's going on Periscope? I hope everybody's having a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. I am extremely late on today, but I'm late because I've been in the studio playing for like the last hour and a half. I haven't been in here in a very long time. This is my first time this year. I probably haven't been in here for like two and a half, maybe three months. But I'm excited to be back in the studio, you guys. Got the green screen going, if you guys can't tell. This is not an office. It's a virtual office. Um, but I'm happy to be here. Let's go ahead and get Facebook on in here, you guys. Um, and I need some feedback real quickly. Let me guys know. Tell me what you think about the green screen. Um, I need honest opinions. Does it not look good? Does it look good? I really need your honest opinions. And, of course... My periscope now does not want to come in. What's going on with this? What's going on with my periscope? It really tripping. So what's going on, Shannon? What's going on, Miss Miss uh, Angela? What's going on, Cherie? Uh, we're trying to get the green screen working correctly. I'm trying to get periscope to come in, but it's tripping. It's like I don't know what's wrong with it, but. That's okay, you guys. Why do I do tax things is going to be the topic today that we're going to be talking about. My name is George Howard. I'm the author of Editor Credit, the founder of Financial Freedom University, and I have been teaching financial literacy now for quite some time. Um, literally, I've been teaching time financial literacy over 20 years, guys. It makes me sound old when I say it, but it's the truth. I've literally been doing it over 20 years. We actually specialize in how to do it God's way is what we do. Actually, how to do it God's way. So let me see if I can now. All right. So look like, okay, there we are right there, you guys. Uh, echo, there's an echo. What is causing the echo? Hmm. There should not be an echo. Unless, give me a second, I think I might know what it is. All right, y'all know I'm playing with the new green screen. Give me a second. I think I might know what it is. No, I think the camera mic is on. I got to try to disconnect it. I think it's the camera mic. Hold on a second. All right, I think I had two mics going on at the same time. Is there still an echo now? Let me know, is there still an echo? Uh, now my screen is all messed up. Yeah, it messed up the screen, screen. Okay, hold on. Is there still an echo? I hear yes, I see no. Maybe so. A little bit, yeah. No echo, it's okay, yeah, a little bit. Let's see if we can turn it down just a little bit. I'm Actually, guys, I'm trying out my new mic, so it might be the mic. It's a brand new mic, and it's going directly into the board. Um, it's better. I just turned the volume down a little bit. I'm just turn the volume down a little bit. All right, well, anyway, said it ain't that bad. All right, let's go. So, guys, why do I do tax things is the actual name of the subject to show that we're doing today. I know that there's like a little split, like right here. Um, I'll have to adjust it later. Let's go ahead and get this show on the road, you guys. Actually, I've been testing green screen like all day long. When I say I've been testing green screen all day long, I've been testing it all day long, and now it wants to act like I ain't got no sense. Hold on one second. <sighs> I did that when I did this, I bet you. All right, I think that's a little better. All right, so why do I do tax things, guys? If you have not shared, go ahead and share real quickly. If you have not shared, go ahead and share real quickly. Why do I do tax liens? Why do I do tax liens? Uh, all right, I think we're finally ready. Sorry for that. Guys, we're gonna be testing this for like the next 
three, four days in the afternoons. Hopefully we can actually get this thing solid. And then we're going to try different backgrounds, right? <laughs> if you have not shared, go ahead and share it out. I really want you guys to share this thing out. Um, share it out for me and uh, see if we can get this thing on the road. Thank you guys for sharing. Let's go ahead and see uh, who's all in here. Who's all in here? Let's see here. We have Joni, Bonita Way, Cheyenne, Renetta, Joanne, Sandrika, Naya, Davida, Ivory Lampkin, Kim Grant, You Can Overcome, Sabrina, uh, guys, like 30 more. Uh, Nora Love, uh, Alinkum, and guys, it won't let me see everybody who's on uh, actually at the time. Reese, I see you just came into the room. Thank you guys so much for being here. We are going to be talking about why do I do tax lane. So guys, if you're ready, Go ahead and throw up the number one, throw up the number one. While you're throwing up the number one, let me introduce myself to a lot of people who just may not know me. My name is George Howard, and I have been teaching uh, financial literacy now for over 20 plus years, literally. And um, uh, I am excited about financial literacy. I've been doing it from a biblical perspective. I believe that God wants you rich. I'm going to say it again. Watch God wants you rich. I believe that broke is, I believe that poverty is a mindset and broke is a temporary condition. If you can change your mind. You can and will change your money. Money will change from changing your pockets to dollar bills in your wallet every single time. So guys, why do I do tax things? First of all, if you don't know what tax things are, tax things is, are another investment that you can actually get into that will actually, I believe in my opinion, that will make you a lot of money. And um, that's the investment that I choose uh, to invest in. And I've been doing it now for over four years and it's made me a millionaire. It's literally turned me from homeless to a millionaire. And I was talking to one of my mentees the other day, Jeremy, and um, Jeremy was like, hey, man, you know, uh, she said, because they work, right, Cheyenne? He said, man, you know, most people don't believe you when you say that you were homeless. I was like, he didn't say most people. He said a lot of his friends that he tell uh, I was homeless too don't believe me. But guys, I, I, like, I don't have a reason to get on here and talk about my father and lie about it. Like, we got into it. I didn't have a home. Uh, I moved with my auntie. I slept on her couch uh, for some years, literally for about a year. Um, end up moving in with a young lady. Was well, actually I was sleeping on my auntie's couch and maybe some friends and family as well uh, in Chicago, and uh, going back and forth. And then I met a young lady. Ended up moving in with her. Uh, I know it was. I know it was like listen, like, and we're gonna get off subject. I can see it now. I know that it's against everything, but I stand for you. Stand for uh, that we shouldn't have been living together. But guys, I got tired of sleeping on the couch. <laughs> I just, I just got tired of sleeping on the couch. Is there anybody in here that can understand, like, I just got tired, not tired, tired of sleeping on the couch. What's going on here? I'm wondering when you was coming in here. I got, I just got tired. I got tired of sleeping on the couch, you guys. And so I had to make some kind of change somewhere, and I ended up moving in with her. And that relationship really didn't work. It, um, I was ready to go, and I, had, I didn't have nothing. I had nothing to call my own. I had nowhere to go. I did not want to go back to my auntie's couch. So I invested in the tax lien and it turned into a house. And I sold that house for 50 plus thousand dollars and I did it again and then I did it again and I did it again and I did it again. And you guys, uh, four years later, um, literally over a millionaire and God has been so gracious, he's been so kind. And I give him all, all, all props. Like guys, the, the numbers that we've been able to do is only because of the glory of God, only because of his faithfulness. So I'm really, really, really excited about that. So the first reason that I do tax liens, the first reason I do tax liens, because it's a blessing to me. It's a blessing to me. Guys, I believe this, that, that whenever you do something in the natural, and I just started on the couch, and you're already tired, Ms. is that McGee? Yeah, ma'am, uh, yeah. It's a blessing to me. You guys, the Bible says that the blessings of the Lord make it rich and addeth no sorrow. The blessings of the Lord make it rich and addeth no sorrow to it. This is truly, truly, and it's not braggadocious, but it's truly made me rich. And there's no sorrow added on to this. Uh, I have, I'm now a homeowner. So I went from being no home to having about 50 homes. I went from having no passive income having a large massive passive income I, I went from you know really not investing in anything to actually investing uh, really really heavily into this real estate investment and um, it's really been a blessing to me it is my encouragement to you that you find something if it's not tax liens find something 
that you can actually do that's going to grow your money. Find something that you can do that's going to actually begin to um, give you. All right, you guys, I hope I'm back. I think I gotta go find Periscope again. Um, and maybe, I don't think I gotta find YouTube, but I know I gotta go find Periscope again. All right, so guys, we're back. I'm sorry about that, but we're talking about why I actually do tax liens. And the first reason why is because it's a blessing to me. All right, and guys, if you guys are coming back in, just go ahead and uh, start hitting that share button again for me. Again, we're in the studio. I'm on wireless, and I'm in, literally, if you guys don't know, I bought the house next door, and we put a studio in it. And so uh, 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 I'm still using the wireless from next door, so it's, uh, it's uh, giving me some problems right now. Let's see. Am I back, you guys? I don't see myself. Am I back, you guys? I really don't see myself. Am I back? I really don't see myself, you guys. Let's see here. All right, let me see here. All right, well, if Periscope don't come in, you guys, look like I'm still live on Facebook. So, I think. Am I still on Facebook? Yeah, okay, I'm back on Facebook. All right, so anyway, you guys, so the first reason why is because of the blessing to me, guys. A lot of you guys right now are going to work and you're struggling going to work, back and forth to work. You hate getting up in the morning. You hate getting into traffic. You hate when you get to work. You hate the people you work with. You hate what you have to do while you're at work. And then you have to get off work after a full two weeks of work and you hate the paycheck you get. You hate the taxes they take out. And you hate the commute back home. And you, I mean, you hate that you have no time with your family. That's just so much and so much, so much, so much, so much hate that at some point, guys, if you gotta do something different, you gotta find some way to do something different. If you don't do something different for you, then when are you gonna do it? When is it gonna happen? Like, this has really been, like, if it's, you have to find something. Find anything, find anything that's gonna work for you and then start doing it. Guys, don't live your life in misery because life will absolutely be that. It'll be miserable. I've been there, I've done it, and many people, that's you. If you, if you hate, <laughs> literally, getting up for work, going to your commute, you hate the people, I ain't say the people you work with, you dislike the people you work with, you really dislike what you do while you're there, you dislike the pay, you dislike the commute back home, you dislike the fact you don't have no time with your family, throw up, say, just say me, 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 me. I need to see some me's, whether you're on Facebook, and I'm not on Periscope right now, so just throw up some me's, 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 me's. If you hate it, and that's absolutely you, I want to see who you are. Um, yeah, it's time, yeah, it's. Um, let me see if that's you. I really want to see if that's you. If you hate it, if you hate it, let me see. I know I hate it. I know I, I absolutely despise it. I hate it. I think I'm back on Periscope, you guys. So let's welcome Periscope back, guys. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. All right, y'all back. All right, thanks. so Periscope is back. But guys, like literally, I hate it. I hate doing those things. I hate the commute. I, well, I hated it. I don't have to do it anymore, thank God. Like, but I, it, it was detestable to me. The blessings of the Lord make it rich and added no sorrow to it. So the question I have for you is that, is the job a blessing? It actually, it, it literally gives the definition of blessing of the Lord. What do they do? They make it rich and they add up no sorrow to it. So it's a twofold thing. It's a condition. Like it tells you if it is a, watch this, if it makes you rich and add up no sorrow, then you can say it's the blessing of the Lord. If it doesn't make you rich and it does add sorrow, then what is it? And then I want to put it in terms of your job. What is your job? Does it make you rich and does it add sorrow? Or does it not add sorrow? That, that, that's what I want to know. And if it does not qualify for that and you really don't like it and you really don't do it, my question is when are you going to do something different? When are you going to do something different? We complain, we pray, we fast, we do all that kind of stuff. We shout, we turn around three times in a circle, we touch our neighbor. 
but we never take any action. YouTube was steady? Cool. Thank you so much, uh, mistress. Uh, so I ain't missed a beat on YouTube, you guys. Awesome. So when are you going to take action? So whether you invest in tax liens or you decide, you know, I'm going to ride this Bitcoin out or I'm going to do cryptocurrency at all. I'm going to learn stocks. I'm going to actually begin to do real estate. I'm going to do wholesaling. You have to find something. You're going to open a business and you're going to find some passive income through that. You're going to do inventions. You're going to do patents and licensing. And you're, going to, you're going to patent your, your product. You're going to license it out. You have to find something that you can do that's not connected to your time. Here's the question. When are you going to actually do it? Yeah. When, when, when is it going to happen for you? In Facebook, you guys, I think my Facebook system was absolutely destroyed. It. Yeah, my Facebook is absolutely destroyed. At least on mine, it's destroyed. It. I look pretty good on Periscope, look like, but on Facebook, it's very distorted. Busy with your job. 2018 second house. Woo! Second house. All right. The first reason why I do tax it's a blessing to me. I literally love what I do. I love what I do. It's giving me the opportunity to employ people who normally couldn't get jobs. It's giving them a re-hope in life. When, to, to, to see the conversations that we're having and see the conversations I hear them having about how they're going to the auction, how they're going to get them some tax liens and how uh, they're going to begin to change their life and they're looking forward to being a millionaire and they no longer, watch this, they're no longer talking about dope, and how many packs they can sell, and uh, video games, or who's playing football. The conversations are now beginning to be stimulating. You know why? Because they actually begin to see something else. They begin to have hope. They begin to have, uh, I knew something to look at. Nobody's ever giving them anything else to look at. That's why the Bible says, without a vision, my people perish. What do you have before you that you're seeing that makes you want to reach for the stars that makes you want to say yes i can change my life that makes you say yes i want to be greater somebody is pulling you into greatness somebody's pulling you into your destiny somebody's pulling you into something that's going to benefit you not just entertain you who is mentoring you whether it's personal or from a distance you guys you got miles, dr miles Morrow is one of my mentors and he's not even living but he's one of my mentors because through his even through even though he's gone he lives on through the tapes. He lives on through uh, the DVDs. He lives on through the books. What are you, what, like seriously, like I'm not being funny. I'm not trying to talk about anybody. I really want to know. Like what are, you, what are you doing differently? I am, thank you so much. That's a blessing, thank you. If you don't do anything different, then why would you expect any different results? So number one, number two, you guys, number two, number two, number two. She said, I just bought the total investment package two days ago, and I'm halfway finished. Woo! Now we got to take some action, right? We got to take some action. Once we get the course, we take the, we take the class. Now we're going to actually start actually putting it into practice. So I'll see you at the auction in March. Number two, 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 number two. Throw them twos up. Throw them twos up. Throw them twos up. All right? Number two, number two, number two. Let me see your number twos. We're going to number two. The second reason why... I absolutely do tax liens is because it allows me to be a blessing to others. It allows me to be a blessing to others. It allows me to be a blessing to others, right? It sounds like an auto repeat, right? No, I say that because guys, when we buy these properties, some of these have tenants in them. And to see some of the living conditions that some people were in were absolutely deplorable. And we're able to come in and do things for them that nobody's taking the time to do. Like, if, if you would just think, like, why, why? And they were paying, and they're absolutely paying rent. <laughs> and you look at the living like, now nah, we gotta come in, we gotta make this better. Like, these are good people. But not only do we make the house better, guys, we turn them into homeowners. People who, you know, have damaged credit or went through a divorce or were sick or elderly, who never thought they would actually own a home? Guys, we make them homeowners. We make their payments affordable. Like literally, like for example, we got somebody right now we're about to you know, do a loan for. We're about to write a loan for them. Uh, we're selling them a property. And the first thing we do, we don't say, okay, it's gonna cost this much money and this is your interest rate. No, I say, you know, Harold gets their information. Literally, she gets their information. And then we look at their income 
we look at their cash flow and then we say, okay, this is what they can afford to pay. And then we write the loan based on what they can afford to pay. Not based on gross income that they don't bring home. It's based on net income on cash flow, something that we know they can afford because I want to get paid on time. And I, want, and I know they want to actually have some money left so they can actually have some cash flow so they can live. So we find that equal medium point to where they can actually be able to live. 50 years, I don't understand part of that. Am I hiring? Not at this time, and if I hire, it's probably gonna be Cheyenne. Is Cheyenne in here? But it's a blessing, it allows me to be a blessing to others. My contracting team, you guys, literally, I have young black guys who, I got some white guys too, who typically, I'm telling you, that they cannot get jobs anyplace else. We literally took them off the streets. Like, these are young men who wanted to do something different, wanted to do better, but nobody would give them a chance because they had records. And to see these guys grow, you've been a blessing to others. We've been a blessing to others by fixing their homes. Been a blessing to others by, um, is your, is my long term for fifty years? No, man, Paul, I can't do that. Paul, that's 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 gonna be, that's that's horrible, man. You can't put nobody in a fifty year loan. They'll never pay it off. We want to be. I believe in debt free living. So now we got a contracting team where we're actually helping people grow. They'll be at the auction. And you'll probably know that they, you know, they still got the look, they look against the swag. Guys, that mindset is renewed. Guys, we're ministering to them. We're praying with them. We're giving them jobs. They're getting good income. We're teaching them how to be investors. We're showing them something different. Nobody's ever taken time to pour into these young men. All they knew was the street. Been a blessing to others. And then we take people and we make them homeowners. Guys, I don't want to do anything in this. Well, I'll take that back. I want to pastor. And this right now, this is part of my ministry. I love what I do. So the first reason why is because it's a blessing to me. No, Paul, I don't take a loss on the property. You have to understand, Paul, I don't have a mortgage on the property. I'm buying property for $500. Literally. If I buy property for $500, I got a tenant in it already. By the time I take possession of the property, do all my servings in court and all that kind of stuff, I may have $2,000 in the property on some of them. If they pay me $600 a month, am I winning? Yes, I win. Do they win? Yes. They'll pay eight fifty. They went from eight fifty in the same house to six hundred dollars a month. Now they're responsible for their own taxes and insurance, but that's gonna be like you know another hundred dollars, so seven hundred dollars. Guys, they win it all day long. So I'm blessing to them. I'm a blessing to my contractors, and then we actually fix the house before we sell it to them. It allows me to be a blessing to others. I absolutely love what we're able to do and to see people when you know we're able to do what we do and to see them um it, it, it absolutely it's, it's it's fantastic it's fantabulous i love it all right um so that's that's another thing number three you guys number three i understand your housing market is very special uh no paul the way i buy houses is very special it's not the market it's it's the houses it's, it's how I purchased the house. Paul, I'm buying property through something called tax lien certificates. And um, those tax lien certificates, guys, throw those threes up while I actually minister to Paul. Those tax lien certificates actually allows me to acquire your property for pennies on the dollar. So if God bless me with allowing me to buy a whole house for what most people find purses for, do you think I can afford to be a blessing to someone else? See, I don't have to be greedy. The Bible says he blesses us to be a blessing. And as long as I keep sowing seed into other people, God will make sure that he continues to bless me, bless my investors, bless our company, bless, and we continue to grow. Why? Because I'm not being hoardish. It's about expanding people so they can see light, see the kingdom. The, sometimes the only love people will see is through you. The only God people see is through you. The only care people will see is through you. So it's not, it's not the market that I'm in. It's, it's literally the way that I acquire properties. You can do this in every single county, every single state, in every single region. You can do this, Paul. And I got a free training. I got a free training, Paul, just for you. And it's not just for you. That's not the truth. But it's myffu.com. I'm about to put it up on the screen. www.myffu.com forward slash P2P training. All right. And I'm going to say free tax lien training. All right, now I'm going to actually put it up on the screen, Paul, so you can actually see um, right there. 
If you go right here, look right, look, look down there, right, right. You gotta look. I used to be able to do that. Now it's like right down there. Look down there on the lower third. Look down there on the, on the, on the lower third. Michigan don't have, and that's even better. Somebody said Michigan don't have liens, they only have deeds. That's even better. Because I have to wait 120 days before I can even petition for deed. Then it's another two months. So usually six months later, it takes me to take possession of the property. In Michigan, you leave the auction with the property. It's yours. Deuces is mine. That's right. We represent Jesus to the world. That's it. So number one, you guys, it's a blessing to me. Number two, the reason I do tax liens is because it's a blessing to others. The third reason I do tax liens, you guys, the third reason that I do tax liens is because of something called cash flow. Now, I pray that I can actually get off this point because you guys know I am all about cash flow. Guys, somebody said cash is king and they lied to you. Cash is not king. Cash flow is king. Somebody said with me, cash flow is king. You was in the train the other night. So I'm talking about cash flow is king. Guys, a lot of people right now believe in God for more income. Do, I'm going to say it again, and y'all, it's going to mess you up. You're going to be wondering what am I talking about, but I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it, and I'm going to say it again, say it again, say it again. Do not believe God for more income. I'm going to say it again. Do not believe God for more income. You said, George, why would I not believe God for more income? Because, watch this. Okay, I'm going to put it another way. Let me, let me, let me try to put it another way. All right. How much did you make 10 years ago? I want you to put it this way. Compared to the day, give me a number. I want you to do the difference. What you make today compared to what you made 10 years ago, put it on the screen. So if you make $40,000 a day and you made 25,000 10 years ago, that's a $15,000 difference. Tell me, put it on the screen, what is the difference between what you make today and 10 years ago? And if you did $50,000, Paul, all right, that's the difference between what you made today and what you made 10 years ago, right? All right, so let's see, somebody else, come on. I wanna see everybody else, come on. What you make today compared to what you made 10 years ago? I wanna see it. What you make today compared to what you made 10 years ago? Let me see. Uh, Reese, you made $100,000 today compared to 10 years ago? All right, I'm with you, still with you. $70,000 10 years ago, $90,000 today. All right, be beauty. All right, so I see a $20,000 difference. All right, come on. Come on, y'all. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Come on. Let me see. <laughs> they like, uh, 64 Lampkin. All right. All right, I see you. All right. Now, watch this. Now, I know a lot of y'all didn't answer the question, but I know in your head you probably already done it. So here's the question I have for you. You got more income, but do you see it? You have more income than you did 10 years ago, but has your lifestyle really changed? Got a $45,000 difference, Ms. Man. Man, has your lifestyle really, not lifestyle, has your, ha, ha, do you see it? Do, are, are you seeing it in you not living check to check? Are you seeing it in you being able to retire? Are you seeing it with you being able to invest? Are you seeing it? Are you seeing it with you being debt free? Are you really seeing the difference? Like I really want you to answer the question, put yes or no. Are you seeing the difference between 10 years ago and now? Some people say I was married and struggled, now I'm single and I'm struggled. Or I was single and I struggled, now we're married and we're still struggling and we got two incomes. Somebody said yes, I got one yes. I got two yeses, somebody said yes. Yes and no, kind of, sort of. No. The reason most people got another no, the reason why 10 years ago you made more money, I mean less money, and now you make more money, and it's still the same, is because, watch this, when you got more income, when you got better income, you got a better car, you got a better house, you got more kids, you got more expenses, you got more debt, you went back and got more student loans, trying to get a better job. You went and got more of an apartment. You went and got more furniture. You went and got more, you know, whatever you could think of. You got more TVs, you got more living space called square footage. More, 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 more. 
When you get more income, you get more expenses. So you get no cash flow. Your income will typically meet your expenses. Well, your expenses will usually come up to the level of your income if you haven't changed your mindset. Your problem is not income. Your problem is cash flow. And you don't have cash flow because nobody's ever told you and showed you how to do it. And that's what you need. You've been believing God for a promotion on your job. And every time you get a promotion, you go broke. You've been believing God for, you know, God, God, I, I just need more money. No, you don't need more money. You need more cash flow. I need more money and less expenses. I need, le I need same income and less expenses equals what? More cash flow. Same expenses and more money equals more cash flow. But if you just get income, you're going to bring your income up. I promise you, you're going to get a better house. Right now, right now, it's tax season. You're already planning on spending what? Oh, man, I'm about to do this with my tax season. I'm about to do this with my tax season, with, with my tax money. We're going to turn up here. We're going to do this. So if I change my 30-year mortgage to a 15-year mortgage to pay extra on my principal, I could have showed you how to do that for free. It wouldn't have cost you what you paid, the one or two points that you paid the mortgage company to do that with. I could have showed you how to do that for free. It wouldn't have cost you a dime. But I'm glad you got the right mindset. The right mindset is good. The right mindset is excellent that you're trying. Broke lives matter. Bow. Right? My tax would be buying a property. Sharika, make your money work for you. It's called cash flow, you guys. So I buy property I do tax liens because I get cash flow from it. Guys, literally, I have no money into these properties or very little money into these properties. We work hard all day long, but it generates cash flow for me. It generates cash flow for my partners. It generates cash flow for our investors. And guys, cash flow is king. See, somebody told you cash is king, so you've been going after cash. And you wonder why you don't have no flow in your house. Guys, currency is supposed to have a current. Say it again. Currency is supposed to have a current. Where's the current in your life? Tell you what, keep that thought. I'm going to be right back after this commercial break. Hey, this is George Howard from Financial Freedom University, and I'm so ecstatic right now because one of my great students had just bought her first property, and she bought it for $1,600. I mean, that's $1,600, you guys. Most people are spending more than that on a car repair or on a pair of shoes or on a Christmas, on a vacation. She bought a house. She will never have a mortgage again. Totally debt free a house. All brick, three bedroom, one bath, living room, dining room, kitchen, full basement, you name it, it's all right here. I could not be prouder than this young lady. Harolyn, Harolyn, tell them how you got started, what you did, what made you decide to go ahead and take this leap of faith. My name is Harolyn Williams. I'm a single parent of four kids and I found George on social media. I took his first, um, the first course I took was Six Steps to Six Figures. The second course was Purchase to Profit. And what I did, I took my tax refund and I bought a whole house. Half a house? Nope, a whole house. <laughs> So I bought this um, beautiful home, all brick, three bedrooms, and uh, no debt, no mortgage, paid in full. No debt, so, no mortgage. First time homeowner, and uh, I can honestly say I got my first home with no 30-year mortgage, no debt, which is a blessing. So if I could do it, <laughs> you could do it too. Hey, this is George Howard from Financial Freedom University, and I'm so ecstatic right now because one of my great students. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Edward. I'm from San Diego, California, and I'm here in Chicago at the Purchase the Profit Conference, learning tax lien investing with George. I flew from San Diego, California to Chicago because I want to learn tax lien investing and I've known about the uh, tax liens, I've known about tax deeds, I've researched it, but I haven't found a proper mentor that can guide me, that can give me 100% content, no fluff, 
and I believe that I found the right mentor in George, and I believe that with his mentorship and his guidance, I can go a long way. Uh-oh. All right, and we're back, you guys. We're talking about um, how and why I and what I do with tax liens. How do you get a tax lien off my home due to business partners stealing the tax money? Um, a tax lien off your home, you that's a big, long question, but I can't actually help you with that. It's, it's a long way to go, though. Uh, how much is a tax lien worth and how old is it? How long? How old is it and how long is it? Tell me that. Tell me those two things. Um, well, it's the two different types of tax liens. The tax lien she's talking about is uh, she had a business and um, the income tax or the state tax or the federal tax uh, didn't get paid, so now they put a tax lien against her. Um, you can look at the potential, you can, you can rehab it, look at the potential structure. Uh, but yeah, it, it is possible. Um, but it's a very, very extraneous, extraneous process. Are they trying to work with you at all? Uh, as IRS, four years, it's four years old and 168,000. Yeah. Um, I take it that, what, 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 what kind of entity were you? Were you an S Corp, were you an LLC, were you a C Corp, were you a partnership, were you an LLP? What, what kind of entity were you? What kind of entity did you file? That's, that's important as well. Um, if you were S Corp or LLC, um, that's not true, Chase. Chase, don't do it. Chase, we give hope here, man. Chase was like, bruh, 168,000? Lord Jesus. You were LLC? All right. Um, let's do this. Um, let's talk offline. Um, what, what are they saying to you? I want to get done with this. I don't want to get off topic, but I do want to help you. So um, let's, let's see if we can talk offline. Email Brittany or call the office at 773-816-3502. And I typically charge for a consultation. I'm, I'm gonna do yours at no cost. I typically charge for a consultation. I'm gonna do one at no cost for you. All right? Um, yeah, team at myffu.com or 773-816-3502. All right, thank you, Cheyenne. Cheyenne said, you know what? I'm, I'm about to get this job. Cheyenne is working, I'm telling y'all. Y'all gonna look up Shane gonna be on staff. Like dead serious. All right. All right, you guys. Uh, we're talking about cash flow, you guys. Number four, number three reason I do it is because of cash flow. All right. All right, y'all. I got you, girl. Don't worry about it. Um, guys, another reason that we do this, not only because of cash flow, let's see here. By the way, you guys, if you guys have not taken time to actually register for the Purchase the Proper Conference, uh, you guys wanna do that now. Uh, some of you guys, I know you guys, some of you guys are waiting for you to get your tax money back. Uh, what's my consultation fee? Uh, your first consultation, the first one is 30 minutes and I charge $30. But after that, I charge $100 an hour. That's, that's my consultation fee, $100 an hour. Um, the first one is $30. All right, so, all right, guys, it's look good, look warm, and look cool in here. All right. So number four, guys, the fourth reason that we actually do tax liens, right? Number four, number four, number four, number four, number four, number four, all right? Fourth reason that we do tax liens is because it generates what's called passive income. So again, guys, if you have not shared the scope out, go ahead and do share the scope, share the scope out for me, please. But the fourth reason is called passive income. Guys, we do passive income. I, I love passive income. Passive income is good to me. Guys, passive income is good for me. Passive income is the bomb. You guys, when you go to work every day, that's called active income. Your income is active because you're actively working for it every single day. Your income is active because it's tied to you. If you don't do no work, you don't make no money. If you don't clock in, you don't make any money. If you don't have a nine to five, you're not making any money. Or you can be self-employed and not have tax, not, not have passive income. If you're not working, you're not getting paid. <laughs> so with that, how do you retire? And I'm being honest, like I'm, and we're gonna get into retirement because that's one of the reasons that I do this, right? 
Passive income allows you to have income even when you're not working or when you're on vacation or when you sleep. Guys, real estate has allowed me to have passive income, guys, with in, in literally dead. I don't know. It, it's good money. Good money. Great money. And guys, it's getting even larger. And it's good money, not only because, watch this, because I have, I don't have a lot of money into the property, but also I have good cash flow coming in and it's coming in, you know, by tens or twenties or thirties every single month. What's going on, Miss Property? Good to see you. What's going on, Kimmy? So when you start talking about cash flow or, or passive income, guys, you can get passive income too. Yesterday, I think I stopped in the middle of my, my Periscope and started giving some business advice. So, right? So today, I think I sold three courses today and I wasn't doing anything. I, I didn't do anything. That was passive income. Like, and we when we start doing our audit, like I, I got automation set up and when we really, really start marketing and doing our automations and we really get our marketing in place, you guys, it's our goal to sell three to four courses a day at a thousand dollars a piece. Well, that actually equals out to be a one million dollars in revenue. That's what we believe in God for this year. That's on top of the webinars we do, that's on top of all the conferences we do. So on top why? Because it's passive income. Here's the question I have for you. What are you going to do to bring passive income into your life? Because as long as your income is tied to your time, you're never going to get wealthy. Because your time is limited. Your time is limited. You only have so much time on the face of this earth. How much time are you going to use it clocking in on a nine to five? How much time are you going to continue to set away from your family? Now, I'm not saying you got to do tax liens. I'm telling you, this is why I do tax liens. Guys, you can do, uh, you can invest in something to get dividends. You can actually start a company and that may own some of the equity in the company, the majority of the equity in the company. You can do stock and get dividends. You guys, you can license a product and get, you know, get royalties off your licenses. You can do a lot of things to, get, to create passive income. Some people say, I'm going to do MLMs and get residual income off my MLM. But you got to do something that's not tied to your time. If you don't do anything that's not tied to your time, you will always be working for your time. Guys, and you only got so much. So if you're only working eight hours a day, that's all you're ever going to get is eight hours worth of money coming in. And you don't want to work more than eight hours a day. Some people out here working, working two jobs. Two jobs. And still no passive income. So here's the question. When are you going to make the sacrifice to deny you and say, I'm going to start putting money to a side so I can invest in something that's going to start working for me? Guys, I, I say this and, I, and people don't understand it, so just kind of hear me out. I want you guys to put it on the screen on Facebook. I want you to put it on the screen on YouTube. Put it on the screen on Periscope. Saving is for suckers. Not suckers. Suckers. Saving is for suckers. One more time. Saving is for suckers. Saving is for suckers. No, like seriously. Savings is for suckers. People tell you, oh, you need to save your money. Pay yourself 10% first. Put it into a savings account. And you need to do, you know why they tell you that? Guys, I don't, I, I don't even know going to go down this road. But they tell you that because the more money you put into a bank, the more money a bank can lend. So a bank gave you that idea. And a bank, somebody who works at the bank told you that. Watch this. Somebody who wrote in a bank, taught somebody else that, like somebody like me or somebody else, and they tell you to put that, put your money in a bank. No, you don't. Put your emergency fund in a bank. But that's it. That's all that goes into the bank. That's it, an emergency fund. That, that's all. An emergency, I can get to it, and I can, do, I can get to my money, right? Everything else goes into something that's working for you because that bank is only going to pay you 0.003%. They're going to give you, so like if you put $10,000 in a bank and it stays in there for a whole year in your savings account, you might make 50 cents. You might make a dollar. Do you think the bank got their money sitting in the bank? I want to really ask you that question. Do you really think the bank has their money in the bank? What do you think Chase money is? Or what do you think, you know, Bank of America's money is? What do you think Wells Fargo money is? Where's their money? 
They invest in the global economy. They're making their money work for them. But they tell you, oh, put your money in the bank. And then they take your money, and then they're going to make more money off of it. <laughs> Listen, seriously, I'm not playing. They, you put your money in the bank. You guys you know for every dollar you put in the bank, they can actually make nine, right? Literally. So if you put $10 in the bank, that gives them $90. And they actually take 90 and go invest it. Because it's, it's another story. I told you I didn't want to get into it. But then they, you put the money in the bank. They take your money and say, thank you very much. Mr. Howard, and they go over there and they're going to go invest the money. Right? They tell you to let it sit in the bank. Say this is for suckers. They get like 12% off our money, give us like 10 cents. Yep, that's correct. So when we start talking about passive income, simply put, putting your money in the bank for savings is simply lending to them and charging you interest. That is good. That is good. I like that. I like the concept that you are a lender. It's called a savings account. I like that concept. Wow, that's deep. You are a lender. You're just very bad at it. <laughs> yeah. You are a lender. You're just bad. If you got a savings account, you're lending, you're literally lending the bank money at a very horrible interest rate. You lent the bank money at a point. One or I say, we'll just say you got two percent in that CD or that mutual fund or not mutual fund or that money market account, right? But when you got a bank loan from them on that mortgage, oh, five and a half, six percent on that car, eleven percent on that business loan, eleven percent. So at some point, you got to stop tying that money to your time. You got to find some dividends. You got to find some passive income. What should you do with your savings? You should invest it, JWK. You should invest it. Here's another question I got for you guys. Watch this. People that own companies. Oh, by the way, I think I might do a special scope tomorrow on Jeff Bezos. He is now the richest person to ever live. I think I'm gonna do a very special scope on just him. He is the richest person to ever live. Amazon.com if you don't know who he is. The richest person to ever live. Amazon.com. What's going on, Dewana Donna? Jeff Bezos, the guy who owns Amazon.com. Yeah. But did you know he started off in his garage selling books? Let me see if I can find that picture. I want you guys to really see this. Um, yeah, Jeff Bezos is the richest person to ever live. Yeah, surpassed, he surpassed everybody. He's the richest person to ever live. Like, he's not the richest person on earth right now. He's the richest person to ever live. Nobody in the world has had more money than Jeff Bezos. You can go down to history, maybe you go like down to Solomon or somebody, but as far as our records known, we cannot find anybody in history that's had more money than Jeff Bezos in the world. Yeah. I'm gonna see if I can um, see if I can find a picture of Jeff Bezos when he started. I know I'm gonna get right back to um, this is what I want to see right here. Wow! I'm about to show this to you guys. Let me see if I can download it real quickly. This is the start of Amazon.com. Like I really, guys, guys, this is amazing. I'm gonna do a special scope just on, on just this. I, 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 you guys got to see it because guys this should give you all the hope in the world this should give you all the hope in the world guys if this don't give you hope I don't know what to tell you if this don't tell you that God can make dreams come true I don't know what to tell you all right I'm about to share it I'm about to share it real quickly hold on uh, Let me see. Hold on. I'm, I'm trying to get there. That's a couple things I'm trying to do all at one time, right? I'm trying to play with this, uh, with my new, my new green screen. <laughs> I'm loving it, right? I'm really loving this green screen thing. I get it. I got all kind of gadgets and stuff, man. It's really cool. I'm, I'm loving it, right? So um, I'm about to play with it very quickly.
<laughs> That's pretty cool. All right. This is pretty cool, guys. Okay, I'm about to show it to you. Give me 30 seconds. So I'll tell you what. Let me go to commercial break. When I come back, I'll show it to you. All right? I'll be right back. Hi, my name is Katrina Beverly. I'm a new investor with Financial Freedom University over here in Indiana. And I just want to let you all know that I went to the auction for the first time and I purchased me three properties and I am so excited and I am overwhelmed and ready to get into making this money. I am standing in front of my duplex that I had purchased at the auction for $1,100. And I am so excited to become an Indiana resident because I will be moving over here because I plan on purchasing more. And I am so excited and I would advise you all to get in on this because it is big. Get with Financial Freedom University and he will help you get what you need. Hi, my name is Katrina Beverly. I'm a new investor with Financial Freedom University over here in Indiana. All right, you guys, right here. That's the picture I was looking for. Not the shot I was looking for, but that's the picture I was looking for. The guy that you see behind me, his name is Jess Bezos, right? Now, you guys want to talk about passive income? Do you think this guy's clocking in every day? Do you? Do you, do you now, he is because he's, he's still an active CEO. But do you think he has to? You know, his, his goal is that he wants to take down Walmart. Guys, if you can't see this picture very well, I want you to see it a little different. I want you to see it this way. That guy right there, this guy right here, what you see in the background is literally Amazon.com. That, that, that's Amazon.com, what you see right there. This guy came up with a way to sell books online. It's echoing again. Uh, is that going to get you guys? All right, I'm, I'm not, not sure, sure why it's that going to see you. Here. All right, you guys, let me see now. Is it still echoing? I try to do something different. But this guy right here, he's literally got, I remember when the book was called Joey back in 2000, I was like, all my used books. Yeah, that's how he made it. He came up with a concept and started his garden. That's okay. We're going to, we're, we're going to literally, um, we're, we're going to literally go into um, a whole periscope on just, on just that, you guys. Uh, I think what he's been able to do is amazing, and I'm very proud of him. Um, but guys, if he can start his garage, you can too. If he can start in his garage, you can too. There's nothing special about Jeff Bezos other than he, he, he had a system, he was organized, he grew his business, and he kept growing his products, he kept growing innovation, and he changed. He, I mean, he literally found he was innovative. He's an innovator. He found a way to literally captivate a market online. You can do the same thing. I'm going to do the same thing with real estate. I'm going, to, I, that's, I'm going to do the same thing with ministry. I did Amazon College Books. Yep. All right. So, you guys, here's the next question for you. Number five. Number five. Number five. You guys want to hear number five? Uh, I want you guys to put it up on the screen. Number five. Where is my water? Where is my water? Hold on. Oh, here it is. I knew I had a water somewhere. All right, number five, put the number fives on the screen. Guys, number five. <laughs> Got to hold my lip. All right. The fifth reason why I want to do this is because of retirement. It's because of retirement. Now, my retirement, I'm going to pass it. Right? That's my retirement. I really want to pass it. I don't want to pass it for money. 
So when I retire, I want a pastor. That's what I want to do. And it will be very, 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 very soon. Very, very, very soon. You're not sure about the new JWK? You're not sure about the new scope? You don't like it? I need to go back to the old school. I can go back to old school. I want to see it. <laughs> I really can. I'm gonna do it. Let me show y'all something. I look like a little small person. All right, so let me see. Is this better? We got to figure it out, you guys. I got to play with it, tinker with it. Y'all got to give me feedback so I don't be on here looking crazy, right? So y'all got to give me feedback so I don't be on here looking all crazy. Because I don't know, right? I'm looking at it and I don't know. You like the kitchen? All right. Uh, uh, uh. All right, so, all right, we'll go back to the, well, we're going back to the kitchen. We're going to figure, figure this out. out. We're going to figure this whole green screen thing out. All right, let me get out to find something else to you. Much better. It looks too green screen. Okay. All right, let me see something like that. I ain't going to let y'all sit on here and talk about me. Hold on. I got something for y'all. Hold on. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue to do this while I talk to y'all, right? So, um, guys, retirement. Here's my question to you, seriously. I got to look at y'all while I talk about this. Right? If you guys have not shared this scope, I want you to share this scope out. Um, if you have not put a plan of retirement in place, or if you have put one in place, seriously, at the rate, at the rate that it's growing, so you are hearing the echo still? Are you still getting the echo now? Echo now? One, two, three, four. Echo now. Is there still an echo? All right. You can hear me better? All right, well, we're going to go up better until I can actually figure this thing out, okay? Because I can't.
Let me see here. Testing one, two, three, four. Testing one, two, three, four. Okay. All right. You guys should not. Testing one, two, three, four. You guys still get an echo. Oh, that was the heat, y'all. The back, the background noise. That was the heat. It was me that kicked off. I got a vent right here and a vent right there in the studio. All right, let's get to the same thing. Okay, I'm sorry, you guys. And I was just going down. All right. So, um, no white noise, echo though, slightly, but you can watch the replay to diagnose it. All right, that's what I did. All right. So, one more. Here's the question. How are you going to retire? That's a real question with a real answer. Do you want to you coming back to the conference? That's a real question with the real answer. How are you going to retire? Like, I'm so serious. Like, put it on the screen. One, two, three, four, five plan, rental properties, okay? Uh, don't try, just come. Call me. Let me know. I'll make it happen for you. Boy, y'all quiet. Not sure. If you don't shoot, put it on the screen. I'm, I don't know. Because most, most jobs, unless you got a government job, most jobs, pensions are gone. They're replacing pensions with 401ks. Uh, and if you're not putting money in 401ks, less companies are now matching. So, how are you going to retire? Like, what are you going to do? What is your plan? Like, I'm so serious. Like, are you going to be the old person at Walmart? Are you going to be the old person at McDonald's? Like, what is your plan? If you have no cash flow now, and you're literally living check to check, and you have no retirement savings or no plan, how are you going to leave your job and still? Social Security is not going to get it. Medicare and Medicaid is not going to get it. Use your self directed IRA. <laughs> Need direction. Yes, yeah, true. Rental homes, IRAs. Uh, Keisha Shay, what's what we'll talk about tomorrow? I'll talk about self directed IRAs uh, tomorrow. Uh, somewhere around noon, though, I'm going to actually talk about Jeff Bezos, right? I got to go to therapy tomorrow. Uh, what time's my therapy? I think I better be at therapy at 11 o'clock. Yeah, I got to be there at 11 o'clock. You had any spirit for some years? Right. So we're going to talk about, you know, SDRA, self directed IRAs, uh, tomorrow. Um, but right now, you guys, like, seriously, how are you going to retire? Practical steps. Thank you, Ms. Arnold. All right. Most people don't know. And that's really sad. That is really sad that we can go to school 12 years, go to school for an additional four years, and some people even went to school after that, and nobody ever taught you how to stop working. They told you to go to school, they told you to get a good job, but they never told you how to stop working. Like, does that make sense? They told you to go to school, get a good job, but they never said, how do you actually leave the job? Kimmy, that's what's up. She said 22 years, she, it matches up to 8%. Most only on up to five, some are three. Hers matches up to eight. Yeah, that, that's Kimmy, that's that's also most, and she has a pension. Who you work for? That's a good, who, who you work for, Kimmy? Put them up, I mean, shoot. That, that's when you, listen, I do this for a living. I don't see that too often, almost never. 
You got 8%. They match up to 8% and they got a pension? I don't even know who it is. Lab Rock? Never heard of them. Girl, keep that job until you actually get your own. You guys, just allow me to retire. If you want to retire, more black money, welcome. I don't see my retirement from working for someone else. I see real estate is set up. Yeah, financial services. Okay, that's that's why. That's why. I, that, it makes sense now. It does. It makes sense. Guys, retirement is a real, real, real issue. Your auditors, okay. Retirement is a real issue for America today. It's not just you. It's, it's like 80, and I don't want to quote the statistic, but I, I believe, I know 78% of America live in check to check, but it's like, it's less than, less than 7% of America has a re, like a real retirement plan. Less than, less than 7%, like a real retirement plan. That is to say that they can live the same lifestyle when they stop working. I want you to think about this. I want you to think about this real quick. I mean, this, 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 this like this, the, the stuff I'm talking about is like common sense stuff. But nobody's ever like questioned what they told us. But does it make sense if they tell you that you should spend 12 years to get an education, four years to get a college degree, to work 40 years on a job, and then when you get ready to retire, you should live less than what you did all of those years. Doesn't even make sense. Like when I retire, should my lifestyle go up? Should I begin to enjoy life? Don't that only make sense? I work my whole life. So now you know you want to work 50 years, 55 years. And they want you to work till you're 72 and a half now. And they're talking about taking it to 75. And now that you really have worked your whole life, and now they're saying, oh, by the way, you probably can't afford that home. Oh, by the way, you probably need to go to a senior citizen's community. Oh, by the way, um, you, we're not, you don't have a pension. You don't have Social Security and Medicare or Medicaid. Oh, by the way, you didn't put enough in your 401k savings plan. Oh, by the way, you never took, you never withdrew or put anything in so you can actually have dividends. It doesn't make sense. But this is what we sign up for every single day in this country. And it's not just you, it's America. Guys, it's America. Because people are getting rich on your ignorance. They're literally getting rich on your ignorance. Literally. Here, here's an example. Here's an example, right? All over the news, they've been talking about this new tax cut plan, right? They've been talking about the new tax cuts. I'm about to, I'm about to skip. I'm about to spit some knowledge for you. Don't um, listen to me. You guys have not shared. You need to share this. They, they whether you watch Fox, CNN, MSNBC, Bloomberg, I don't care who you watch. I really don't. Right? Everybody knows that the that the corporations are going to benefit the most from the tax plan. It's, it's a given. The corporations are going to benefit the most from the tax plan. So here's the question I have for you. What do you think that does for corporation stock? If you know the corporations are going to pay less taxes, which means they make more money, what does it do for their stock and their stockholders? I'll wait. Guys, this is economics 101. Anytime the company makes more money, the stock will actually pay more money. It's called dividends. So how do you make the correlation and say, you know what? Now I'm about, since they're going to pass, since they're going to pass the tax bill, I think I should jump in because they're going to start making more money. Like I'm going to get in Amazon or I'm going to get in Walmart 
or going to start buying into, you know, these are solid blue chip companies. I want to get into, you know, uh, Intel or Microsoft or iPhone or Apple, rather, iPhone, Apple, because they're going to pay less taxes, which means their income goes up, which means their cat, your dividends are going to start paying out. The stock is going to go up and you're going to make money. But because nobody's ever told you how to do that or that you should do it, other people are profiting off your ignorance. This is real talk. This is real talk. Like dead serious. Why should you not capitalize off this? The banks are gonna make billions. The corporations are gonna make billions. Gas and oil are gonna make billions. Transportation is gonna make billions. Hospitality is going to make billions. You know who's still going to be at home being broke talking about, oh, I got another $300 on my EIC credit? Really? Another $300, $400 on your EIC? And they're making billions? Come on, man. Come on, don't let them throw you. Don't, watch this. Don't let them throw you crumbs. Don't let them throw you crumbs. And you'll be like, oh, my God, I'm so happy with the crumbs. No, I want a piece of the pie. I want a piece of the pie. Then give me a crumb. All right. Fifth reason why I do this is retirement. Here's the last one, you guys. You gotta, this is my retirement plan. My retirement plan, guys. In 2018, I will have 100 homes debt free. But a year 2000, by the end of the year 2018, I will literally own. A hundred homes debt free. Do the math. A hundred homes debt free. If I'm hundred percent occupied, which I won't be, I'm gonna be realistic. But let's just do the math. I'm hundred percent occupied. The average rent in my area is seven hundred dollars a month. You take seven hundred dollars a month times one hundred. Guys, that's seventy thousand dollars a month. You take that times twelve. That's eight hundred and forty thousand dollars a month. I mean, a year of just real estate. What happens when I sell a hundred homes for a hundred thousand dollars? This is my retirement plan. There's nothing special about me. The same thing I'm doing is the same thing you can do. I just took 300. I started, literally, listen to me, guys, hear me. I started with $300 and I put it into stuff. Guys, it ain't gotta be real estate. It can be cryptocurrency. It ain't gotta be Bitcoin, just cryptocurrency. Guys, cryptocurrency is here to stay. I don't know about Bitcoin, but cryptocurrency is here to stay. If that's a new technology, trust me, somebody's gonna make a lot of money. Study it, study it, YouTube it. It's all over YouTube. Find some credible people who are really gonna give you both sides, understand what you know, cryptocurrencies are, understanding what blockchain is, and understand what mining is. When you begin to understand all of these components, then you can make a decision to invest. But this here to stay. You gotta find out something. You gotta go somewhere. You have to retire one day. Forex is another one. The Forex exchange, another one. Guys, man, y'all gotta start putting your money making work. What's your retirement plan? What, what's your retirement plan? You gotta put something into place. Six reason, number six, guys, put number six up, we get out of here. Number six reason why I invest in the tax liens. Number six. All right, number six, you guys. Last one, and we gonna get a out of here. The last one is because you are supposed to own the land. You are supposed to own the land. Say it one last time. You are supposed to own the land. When God made men, he, the first thing that he gave you was real estate. First thing he gave you was real estate. The thing that the enemy took from you was real estate. 
Power, authority, control over what? Territory, dominion, the land. When God came down and spoke to Abraham, he said, go to a place I will show you. I want to give you what? Land. Call Canaan. Isaac, Joseph, or Isaac, Jacob, all of them, land. Esau, land. They're fighting over land today. Jesus says the meek shall inherit the what? The earth. You are supposed to be the landowner. You are really supposed to be the landowner. That's your God given assignment. That's what I want to do. I want to control the land. I want to own the land. I want to own it for the kingdom of God. I want to expand the territory. Guys, we sweet singing. Enlarge my territory. But we're not doing anything to enlarge your territory. What are you doing? What, like for real? What are you really doing to enlarge your territory? Like, I'm so serious. That's my last reason. You guys don't understand what I'm talking about. Join us at 7.30 in the morning for our morning manor. And um, we're talking about the kingdom of God. And I really don't want to teach it like that now because I'll get excited and I'll start really, really going into it. Right? But just join us at 7.30 in the morning. If you guys want to know, go back and watch, start watching the previous clips that we had at 7.30 in the morning for our morning manners. And they're going to bless you and change your life. Same thing on Facebook. They're still archived in my, on my timeline. Go through it. YouTube, same thing. We got morning manner timeline. Go through it. We're talking about the kingdom of God. And it's one key blessing to change your life. I promise you. So make you think about the whole way you see religion and kingdom. God never set up religion since the kingdom. And the kingdom is only as large as the territory that it owns. All right, guys. I'm out of here. I love you. God bless you. If you have not registered for the First and Private Conference, uh, please go ahead and do so now. If you have not registered for the First and Private Conference, um, please go ahead and do that now. Uh, okay, what about archives on tax links? Yes, I have archives on tax links too on YouTube, Facebook, and on Periscope. You can go to my archives. Thank you, Jamil. All right. Bye, Cheyenne. All right, you guys. I love you. God bless you. I'll see you guys later.